Hey guys, Mike here. So in this video, we're going to talk about pouring concrete in cold weather and what I do to help my concrete set up quite a bit faster. Now today we're pouring this concrete floor, this basement floor. It's got radiant heat in it. Now the radiant heat tubes aren't hooked up yet. It's 32 degrees out this morning when we start. And the mix design we're going to use is going to really help set this stuff up. Now what you could do if it was really cold, you could use a, a ground heater like this and hook the ground heater right up to the radiant tubing in the floor and then just turn it on low, 60, 70 degrees, and that would help keep the slab warm, you know, if you were pouring this thing in temps that were in the 20s or something like that, but we've had to do that quite a few times. But today it's 32 when we're starting here and it's going to get up to about it's going to get up to about 40, 41 degrees, so we'll be okay today, especially pouring on styrofoam. Now, pouring on styrofoam is also a, a big deal when it comes to getting your concrete to set up. If you're pouring a concrete floor, a concrete slab, or something in cold weather, and the sub base is really cold, that's just going to suck any heat right out of the concrete and really slow down your set time. So, if you're pouring on basically what would be like this morning almost a frozen sub base without this styrofoam our set times would be hours more than it is with styrofoam so that's a big bonus for us a lot of our floors are poured right on styrofoam because people are using this radiant heat tubing you can see the the concrete steaming behind us the concrete temperature right now is about 80 85 degrees so the concrete batch plant has warm water. They turn on their boiler, and they got a big, huge water tank there. And when he batches out the trucks, you know, he adds warm water to the trucks. And each truck has about a 300-gallon water tank. So this is this is a really big water tank they got at the batch plant. And that's that's the first thing with getting your concrete to set up is you got to have it warm. If if we're not pouring concrete today with warm water in it, we're here. We're here probably four or five hours longer than we are going to be today. So warm water is number one. I'm also pouring with a 4,000 PSI mix. So I bump up my cement and my concrete. It does add, you know, three or four bucks a yard extra. But it definitely cuts out a bunch of time in the end. So it kind of evens its way versus pouring a 3,000 PSI concrete. You know, the concrete's going to generate a little heat on its own versus through heat of hydration when it starts to set. So the more cement it has in it, the more heat of hydration it's going to generate on its own. So we got, we got about 120 degree water at the batch plant. And we got a 4,000 PSI mix. And then the other thing I use is I use uh, an accelerator. And there's basically three types of accelerators that we use. We use a flake calcium chloride, which is the one we use the most. And there's also a liquid calcium chloride called, it's called Duracell where we're from. And then there's a, a non-chloride accelerator called Polar Set where we're from. And my preference, you know, I've used all of them over the years many, many times. My preference is definitely the flake. I think the flake helps set up the concrete a lot faster versus the liquid and I think it's more consistent too because you add the flake on the job site versus the liquid is added right at the batch plant when they when they batch the trucks and what happens what we found is some guys on the way to the job will spin their drums a little faster than others or maybe the concrete's 15 20 minutes away and it it really doesn't have much time to get in the truck and mix in the truck that well. And it just doesn't seem to set up very good with the liquid chlorides is what we found. So we much prefer the flake and I've been using flake calcium accelerators for years and years and years with no problems. Um, we would generally put about 2% in so if we have a 10 yard load we'll throw in two 50 pound bags. And we do that pretty much every day this time of year starting in early October so you, you can see this floor the radiant tubing is a big is a big thing around here in Maine uh, probably half the floors we do have this radiant tubing and I've seen a bunch of other videos with people pouring on radiant tubing and they 
They seem to be spread apart further than what the people put them up here. Most of the ones here are eight inches apart like this. And what I've found talking to the heating guys is it just, it heats the floor up a lot faster when these tubes are that close together versus having them 12 inches apart or 16 inches apart. So it's much more efficient in the floor and you don't have to wait for the floor to heat up quite as fast this way. So another thing we do is, you know, we, we get this concrete down as fast as possible with three of us. So but everybody always has something to do. No one's standing around watching. And, you know, the Darren and Luke are dumping the concrete out, getting it spread out. I'll be magging edges. I'll be making wet pads. Um, I'll be doing the little detailed stuff that when they're done dumping the concrete and spreading it, we can get right into screeding it. So that also helps getting it spread out faster, getting it down, and just letting it sit there and start to set up, especially on this styrofoam. This styrofoam is going to hold the heat in that concrete really, really good. So it'll stay, it'll stay uh, above 60 degrees for quite a long time, even if the temperatures, outside temperatures are in the 40s. Once the concrete temperature gets down to about 40 degrees, the heat of hydration almost stops. You know, it, it slows down tremendously. So you'd be sitting on this thing all day and in, into the dark trying to get a good power trial finish on it. And that's just something we don't do anymore. This floor, you know, we power troweled it, we saw cut it, and we were all done saw cutting by 2 o'clock in the afternoon. So we got here, first truck showed up at 6.45, took us... Just you know, just about an hour, 45 minutes to an hour to get this floor poured. So, 7:45, 8 o'clock, we were all done pouring, and then it was power trialed, sawed, and we were loading the trucks by 2 o'clock in the afternoon. And it was only, like I said, about 40, 41 degrees top temperature in the afternoon, and it didn't get much sun either. There was a lot of trees around, so a lot of it was in the shade. The sun will help you out a little bit, but. Up here in Maine, the sun doesn't rise very high anymore, so we get a lot of shadows from whether it's like the concrete wall in behind or trees or anything else in the way. Now you can see Darren's over there screeding, Luke's puddling behind him, and I'm screeding that one little bay we had with just a little five foot rod. So we're getting the concrete down fast, which is a luxury for us because, I mean, everybody's pretty highly skilled here, so we can everybody can pretty much do anything. If you don't have three really skilled guys, then and you got to do most everything. Obviously, you're going to be a little bit slower. So, you might want to cut down on your on your chloride because this concrete, you know, once we get it down, we got about 15 minutes to get it leveled out, screeded, and bolt loaded before it really starts to set up. Another thing we use in our concrete is water reducer. If you guys watching my other videos. You know, so the water reducer helps limit the amount of water we have to put in there to get a good pourable slump, and it, and it maintains the strength of the concrete. So this is basically what we use for a winter concrete mix. We'll use a 4,000 PSI. Most of the time it's three-quarter stone. Straight cement, no slag, no fly ash. That stuff will slow the set on you. And then we add the calcium chloride right at the job site. That comes right with the concrete company that we use some of them don't have that you have to buy your own and put it in but it's basically about 18 bucks a bag for that stuff and it's well worth it well that's it guys that's that's our cold weather concrete mix uh, thanks again for watching if you if you like this kind of video hit the like button if you haven't subscribed yet go ahead down there and hit the subscribe button and we'll see you on the next one